Where is the church? Where is it? All right. Okay, they're all closed down because of COVID. So let's go ahead and look online. Let's see where everybody is. Okay. Well, there's one. Uh, that, that's an old. That's an old post before COVID hit. Let's keep on going. All right. Someone's offering to pray for this person. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no, no online ministry there. No online ministry there. Wow. All right, here's a letter from the pastor. We apologize that our churches have been closed. Wow, this is the same church that a few months ago we was talking about healing in the name of Jesus. But now they're talking about just hunkering down and just, just cowering in their houses and just just letting this whole thing develop them. Okay, let's keep moving on. Let's see, let's see where this church is. Nope, they're closed. This one closed. Oh, here's one that's online. Thank you. We apologize for not being open. We thank you for all your prayers and support. B plus. Are they outreaching? No outreach. Okay, next one. Whew, man, this is getting depressing. Let's keep going. Another one. Nothing. Nothing. Closed. Hours of service. No. Closed. Next one. Closed. <laughs> Closed. Good gosh. Let's keep going. Oh, I don't want to keep doing this much more. This is this is the, this is ridiculous. Ah, here's one. Okay. Okay, they have an online ministry. Okay. Online is down. Lack of funds. Uh, how much does it cost to put something on YouTube, dude? Seriously? All right. Move on. All right, now I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, forget it. All right, here we are. Where's the church? Where's the church, people? Oh, the church isn't the building. The church is people. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Where are they? Where's everybody? Where's the unifying... Where's the unifying voice? Where's everybody's voice coming together and lifting people up? Where is that? I'm going to say this. This whole COVID thing is as ridiculous and crazy as it is. Ultimately, we have resources at our fingertips that we could use if we wanted to continue to push the truth on the gospel of Christ. But we don't want to do it. Because that's not the way our parents taught us. That's not the way we've been taught for 35 years. That's not the way we've been doing it in our church since the beginning of the time. We're going to keep doing it like a bunch of good old boys. And that's the way it's going to be. Okay, that's fine. Advent of technology. You know, technology, We a lot of us can't have, don't have, are easier to adjust to it than others. But my gosh, just look where it can go. Jesus told us to preach the gospel to the corners of the world. Did he say we have to physically walk to those corners? Or do we have to just preach the corners? Preach to the corners. Where does the internet reach? Really? Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. It does. To the corners of the world. Amazing. Why can't we use technology to help show people the heart of God and show people how good God is? To show people how misinterpreted God has been shown in previous messages and other in other bodies and, can, and just, just reveal his heart to the body who so desperately needs to hear hope. Why don't we do that? Because we are we are hunkering down to tradition. Because this is the way. This is not the way that our fathers, our grandfathers, did it. Why can't we use the resources that we have to further foster the message to the corners of the earth? I challenge everyone out there to use whatever means you can. 
to show people God's heart. I've talked to people by phone, instant messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter. I haven't been in a church building. The church is the body of Christ. It's not a building where people gather. It's nice when people gather a lot of times. Sometimes it's not, if they're all thinking correctly. I always consider Sunday morning to be like most other people's Friday nights. Sunday is like my party time. I love to celebrate. But when I go into a church, the feeling that I'm just going into an institution, I feel like I'm in the wrong place. I'm here to celebrate God's love. I'm not here in a straitjacket following a bunch of rules. I'm here celebrating my freedom and celebrating your freedom. And we use the tools that we've been given. And if it's the technology of this world that humans have learned, and we can use that to the benefit of preaching the gospel of Christ to the corners of the world, and I've reached people in multiple countries, Pakistan, Uganda, China, Ooh, that's that was that was that was right that was right tough right there, Russia, India, Mexico. I preach people in the South America everywhere. I mean, it's a, it's amazing. And when I've talked to some people online, they said they've never heard God's heart before, never like this, never. And I'm just and I'm just talking exactly the way God has just opened up His heart to me. It's basic. It's basic. And look how simple it is. Why can't, why can't we do it? I, I don't know the purpose of this message. I, I can't give you a direct line, a direct introduction as to what this message should be called. I think by the time I post this, I might actually have it. But at, at this moment, I don't. Because my, his spirit has just just fills my heart to say something. I just say it as he has just fulfilled me and directed me. And I just go from there. But my gosh, it is so simple. It's so simple. It's so basic. And it, when, when, we, when, when we just see all the stuff that's going on in this world right now, that just should give us more incentive to just jump back into his heart. I know sometimes it can be tough. I know sometimes we can get disheartened. I've had so many friends, family, who have turned their heart away. And I can and I can understand and I've and I've sympathized and I've been there. And God will will help you in that time to help rebuild you as he has helped rebuild me. Because I I've had times where I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to hear anybody talk. I didn't want to hear anybody talk about God. I just wanted to, sometimes I just wanted to be perfectly alone to focus on my situation and to help God use my circumstances to help build this up. And then it puts me right back into the correct perspective again. And then I continue to move forward. And I've lost no time with God. I've lost no time with him because he is outside of time. That's one thing I love to always say in every message. No matter what message it is, I can always say this as a connecting tissue, that God is outside of time. We look at everything through the cycle of time because we're going through day by day, but God is seeing you outside of the fabric of time. So he sees you at the very end of your life and he has seen you and says, I love you right at the very end. You're seeing yourself here. And you say, how can God love me? I'm going through too much problem. But he sees you here. But sometimes we just can't understand that he sees us at this point. You think that all he sees us is right here and what's happened in our past. Here, here's our current situation. He doesn't. You, we can't figure out that he's seen us all the way back here. We just can't, we just can't grasp that. We just can't grasp that. When you do, oh my gosh, when you do... It will rock your world, and it will reset the foundation as to how you just look at everything. 
don't feel bad if you have if you retract if you forget something here and there and you fall back on this world and you look at, at the news and you listen to what people are saying and then and you sit back and say oh god why did i do that why did i fail don't worry about that when you get when you get that revelation that god has seen you out here see you're all this thing that your prob your problems are happening back here but he's fit he's seen you at, at, at your end back here when you got that revelation it'll just reshape you everything is everything is done everything is done so let's just rest let's rest let's rest in his love and his assurance in the set destiny he has already given us by simply us accepting him it's already done and he's not given us a break Calvary was not God's anger management he's not given us a break with Calvary Calvary was a bridge for us to come home because he wanted us to come to him from the very beginning of our time when he created us Adam Eve the foundation of the world he said this is good all the problems that happened were because of our making not because of God's ordaining because of our making he wanted us to be a family he created the bridge for us to be with him it's done and because he's outside of time that's when he instantly saw everything and came down as his as his physical son to create that branch so we can come to him oh my gosh oh my gosh can it be any more perfect than that can it be any more perfect than that let's just rest let's just be at peace be full of joy, as Psalm 16, verse 11 says, because in his presence is fullness of joy. And we are in his presence, because he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we're always in his presence. So if we're not full of joy, it's because we're not focusing on him. I love combining those two verses together more than any other verses in the Bible, because that helps us focus so much on who he is and who we are in him. When we do that, it's just it's just a sharpening tool for us not to do something, but for us to just unclench our fists and just relax. My gosh, relax. Just be at peace in Him, as all of us are, and as the family of Christ, we are exactly where we are we were supposed to be instantly at the beginning when God created Eden again one of my favorite messages I've heard from a sermon was that God doesn't want us to get to heaven he wants us to get back to Eden I love that because Eden he Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the evening it was it was they were perfect they had no outside influence at that point they had nothing pulling them away at that point it was just them and God it was no right or wrong. It wasn't any good or evil. It wasn't an issue at that point. It was just them and God. God wants us to get back to Eden, but we're there. Our mind's not there. Our spirit is. Our mind is not. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because he has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We walk in the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.19 mm. When you get that revelation, oh my gosh, when you get that revelation, you find that peace. You, you are in that peace. You walk in that truth. You walk in that assurance of who you are, of who he is, who we all are in him together. This is a big collective message. I don't know what I'm going to call this. I'm just going to call this my everything. Maybe that's what I'll just call it. But, oh my gosh. It's just so amazing. 
And more importantly than just amazing, this is what we can't grasp. It's so simple. We re when we read the Old Testament, we see people that are so obsessed with the complexity of God's mind. And they, tr and they use those verses to try to transfer that message into today's time. That we're trying to understand the complexity of God's mind. We're so obsessed with the complexity of God's mind, we can't possibly fathom the simplicity of God's heart. How simple can it be? Look at Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. The Bible says he is the perfect representation of God. When you read things like verse books like the book of Job, when you read Exodus, and you see God speaking to Job and to Moses, how are you reading those verses? Are you reading it the way pastors have taught it to you? Or are you reading it the way Jesus would talk to them? If Jesus is the perfect representation of God, and you read those verses in Exodus and Job and all throughout the Old Testament, would it not make sense that they would hear God the way that Jesus would have talked to people? I challenge you with that. Pray on that. Meditate on that. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's something you don't hear a lot. Because religion dominates a lot of teachings out there. God's heart is left to the sidelines. How Jesus talks to you is how God is. If if you hear anything other than what you know Jesus is, you are getting a different message. Jesus is the perfect representation of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. If you can't grasp that with what's being said in the scripture, his spirit will reveal it to you through prayer, which is the first place we should go anyway, because God is a spirit and we are a spirit and he lives in us and we in him. So in the spirit, we are one. And that's where he reveals himself to us. Very important. Very profound. I pray you, this will be a revelation to you. I have no plan when I started this video where I was going. I have no plan where this is going to end up. I'm going where the Holy Spirit is guiding me step by step by step by step by step. This is exactly where it's going to be. And I'll leave you at that. I'm still going. His last word to you. Oh my gosh. His words. My child. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm with you always. This world may deceive you, but I never will, because I'm always there. When you decide to pray, and it's never too late, because I am outside of time, and I am there to receive you, always. Come to me. I am there for you. I will always listen. I will never forsake you. I am your father. This world is not of my ordaining. This world is fallen and I am bringing you all. Through Jesus, the incarnation of myself as a man to cross, to make that bridge, to bring you to me. By simply believing, no other reason, just by believing.
come to my heart. I am there with you, with hope, for you with open arms. I send the story of the prodigal son. I will not hold your sins against you. I do not care where you've been. I do not care where you are. I just know that you're my child. I'm so glad that you're coming home. Please come home. I can't wait for you to come home. I'm here for you. Come home to me. I'll give you that peace. You'll see that peace. You'll experience it. You'll know who you are. My plan for you was always for you to be with me. It was never for you to be separate. And in me, you will see glory and potential and joy that you had never even thought possible. That's the joy of being with your father, being with your God. That's what life is. And you'll see that this is only the beginning. Bless you. I pray that I blessed you. Oh my gosh. I I had no idea where this was going. Oh my gosh, this is just... Don't lose your hope, everyone, please. Just stay strong. You've got the God of the universe living inside of you. He's living inside your heart right now. He just picked you before the very foundation of the world. He has seen you and he loves you. He, know, he knows every hair in your head. He loves you so much and he hurts when you hurt. He really does. But he has already set your destiny in place. He just wants you just to walk in the revelation of, of who you are in him. And he has opened up everything through prayer so that you can experience that. Experience that with him today. It's never too late. Don't ever think that you've committed sins enough to, that God can't possibly take you on in. Just, gosh, if the Bible teaches you anything, look at all the people, like, <laughs> from Adam to, to Noah to David to Joseph. It's everybody. You can look at everybody who has fallen short. David, of all people, my goodness, look at the, th the sins he had committed. But yet God called him a man after his own heart. He knows you specifically. He knows you. He really does. Personally. And you know, if you have experienced him in prayer, it doesn't have to be these long expositions. It could be a few seconds here, a few seconds there. You can experience him in those little fractions. But you can experience that in him. It just help build yourself in him and just, just in the knowledge in him. I know how much we emphasize faith. and Faith is important. But faith is important only as an introduction. Our knowledge in him helps us grow. Faith is the beginning. It's like the, the thing that ignites the candle. But your knowledge in him continues to feed. It's, it's, it's kindling. It's kindling. It keeps feeding the fire for what you know to be true. And what is knowledge you can't be shaken from. Amen. I had no plan how this, this was going to go. I had no plan. These are the best messages I possibly can say. Because this is this is going by faith, literally. 
the faith the Bible talks about is the next step in front of you. We don't like to take the next step. We like to plan 50,000 steps ahead of way. Way down there. We want to go and play it. We can plan that way. And in some aspects in life, it's important to do it that way. But when it comes to God, the best way to plan is always just let God take you in that next step. Because that is where you will grow the most. Most people don't see that. They say, well, why? You, need to, you need to think about way over there. But God says, no, focus right here. But what about all the way back? I just want you to focus here. That's faith. Take this next step. Okay, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And then before you know it, you get to that point. Then you have those other people saying, how did you know it would go that way? I just trusted him. Then you have other people who claim to know it all say, well, you know, you should have, I told you you should have gone that way, and you did. Well, I didn't listen to you. I listened to God. You just happen to be great. You just happen to say you're green on the same path. But, you know, you can't, you're not always going to be right. God's always going to be right, though. Just, just take that next step. I like taking that next step. Brilliant the light as God shines. It's never going to be any brighter than the next step in front of you. He does it that way. He does it that way. I don't look at I don't look at my failures as saying, well, that's God's plan. He wanted me to fail so he can do this. Now I've failed several times along the way in my path. But when I finally stop and say, all right, God, I'll listen to you now. I'll go ahead and just move to the next step over. And he said, well, you could have, well, if you'd listened possibly over here, you would have gotten here a little bit quicker. But I listened more to myself than him. And I wound up paying the price for it. That wasn't God's plan. That was my plan. And I didn't, I didn't listen to him. When I did, it always, always worked out. So I pray this will this will be a big blessing for you. This has been a blessing for me. I I have never had a plan going into these into these posts. So I thank you so much for listening. And if this works for you, I'm just so thankful for this. So God bless you. I'll have a great night. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye.